So our last uh, presenter is uh, Brent Soller uh, from here in Vancouver. So Brent is the peer engagement coordinator at AIDS Vancouver. His interest in evolving the public and community understanding of HIV to reflect current medical realities uh, led him to focus on the new face of HIV, what it means to be undetectable project at uh, AIDS Vancouver. Please join me in welcoming Brent. Hi there. Um, so our interest is in uh, lining the language we use to talk about HIV to accurately reflect current scientific and medical realities. And um, I'll start with a story. In 2007 in Victoria, I was with a friend who was diagnosed as HIV positive, And we thought we knew what HIV was. And um, we even got a pamphlet from the healthcare or the nurse at the STI clinic that talked about how he could deal with the pain of neuropathy by sleeping with the sheets elevated above his toes. So needless to say, we thought the outlook was pretty grim still. And uh, we had heard about a cocktail of medications, but we thought it was a cocktail of meds and that there were still some pretty severe side effects. We assumed his lifespan would be dramatically shortened and of course that he would still be infectious. Um, thankfully, within a couple weeks, we decided to come over to Vancouver and see a couple of um, HIV specialists, and we got a completely different story. Uh, one of the doctors we saw was actually Dr. Julio Montaner, and he said the outlook for my friend was great. He was actually really jovial about it, because you're going to be fine. You'll likely take one or two pills per day. He said many people have few of any side effects, and that has been my friend's experience. And he, he, as well as the other physicians, said that he should have a near-normal lifespan. So that left us wondering, especially as gay males, how is it possible that we couldn't have been aware of how much a HIV diagnosis has changed? So what I'd like to explore now is how new language could be used to um, convey new medical realities. So. Two years ago, I started working at AIDS Vancouver, and I was reminded by hearing different people's stories that the, the difference in perception of what HIV is and the difference in reality, um, they're still vast. And, and one quote in particular hit home with me. Um, one fellow said, since testing positive in 1989, everything has changed, but the language has remained the same. And this is also held up with some peer navigators I've spoken with uh, at Positive Living. They said that the guys that they talked to that have just tested positive in Vancouver know almost nothing about what it means to be HIV positive, and most of them are pretty, pretty freaked out about it. So this got me thinking, um, how can we expect public perception or even the perception of the community to change if we keep using the same language, HIV positive? So what about this word, which is starting to be used more and more, that new word? New, new phase of the HIV story from AIDS to HIV to undetectable. So if we were to compare an untreated HIV diagnosis, in other words, no antiretrovirals, to a treated or uh, undetectable HIV with antiretrovirals, it, the difference is night and day you know, for most people. Uh, the immune system uh, with undetectable treated HIV is often non-compromised. Of course, with untreated HIV, eventually the immune system becomes compromised or is compromised. Infectiousness without treatment, is, yes. Um, many studies now are showing that undetectable HIV, uh, the person has lower negligible chance of sexually infecting someone else. Lifespan, of course, if you don't treat HIV, is diminished, and with treated undetectable HIV, it's near normal. So again, the difference is like night and day, or apples and oranges. So how can we expect this one term to capture these two realities? And this one term, the problem with this term as well is it comes with 30 years of baggage and stigma. It's a pretty, pretty heavy word for a lot of people. <clears throat> so again, just to make this point, if we look at the language that we've used over the last 30 years, AIDS, HIV positive, undetectable, HIV positive alone in the advent of antiretroviral therapy doesn't really give you enough information. You don't know if, if someone identifies simply as HIV positive, are they on treatment and undetectable with that list of uh, outcomes, or are they not on treatment and eventually going to perhaps progress to AIDS with this list of um, outcomes? 
So in order to explore this, I'd just like to quickly show you oops, um, our web page that we developed at AIDS Vancouver. And um, this web page, or this project is called Undetectable, the new face of HIV. It's a new resource exploring what it means to be undetectable. And this graphic um, represents our reimagining of the traditional red ribbon used to promote HIV awareness. The disappearing red dots represent the vanishing HIV virus in one's body as antiretroviral treatment suppresses one's viral load to undetectable levels. Uh, we believe that reinterpreting this iconic symbol of HIV awareness provides a powerful visual metaphor for our project's goal of rebranding or updating people's idea of what HIV is in the post-treatment era. So on this web page, we have various tabs. We have uh, basics about what it means to be undetectable, research like partner and HPTN, um, any social commentary in the news, policies and positions taking into account an undetectable HIV status as well as links to other campaigns. So we try to create a resource that focuses on this side of the HIV story, from AIDS to HIV to undetectable. So. Hopefully this is an empowering tool for people that are newly diagnosed or an informative tool for others. And I'll just try to get back to the PowerPoint presentation. Okay, so... Um, Shift F5. <laughs> one sec. Shift F5. Shift F5? <coughs> Thanks. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Okay, so, so I'd like to talk about four benefits of aligning the language we use to talk about HIV to reflect current realities. One I've already talked about, one, wor one word, undetectable, clearly conveys new medical realities. Um, I'd also like to talk about, and by telling some stories from the community, how new language can reduce stigma and increase empowerment, um, how new language can decrease discrimination, and also I'd like to talk about how new language can be fairly easily used in safer sex language and tools for those that choose not to use condoms. So stigma and empowerment, um, undetectable is more than just a test result. What I mean by that is um, we were getting ready to do a little launch at Pride this year and we had our buttons like the one I'm wearing, the undetectable button, as well as the web page and we had some signs prepared and we wanted to introduce undetectable at Pride this year. So um, I met a fellow in the community in his 60s, who's been living with HIV for a couple decades, and um, he was really curious about this. So he came into the office um, to check out our webpage and all of the information that we had prepared for Pride, and he was moved to tears by the animation that I showed you with the red ribbon changing to the undetectable ribbon. And he said, um, he said, you know, I use undetectable to describe myself and my state of health, but usually I use pause or HIV positive. He goes, I hadn't thought about using HIV beyond just sort of a test result and using it more as a way to describe my state of health or my identity. And he, what he said was, I feel lighter, like a, like a weight has been lifted off my shoulders. So that was pretty cool. And then he, um, he was the first person to actually wear one of the buttons because we just made them. And he put one of them on his jacket and walked out of the office. So that was pretty cool. Um, and actually, I have a number, a number of stories while working for the last two years at AIDS Vancouver um, of sto stories like this. So now um, a quick story about stigma and empowerment, how undetectable is powerful and it affirms a state of health. Um, one fellow went to a local clinic during flu season and the nurse said to him, and this is actually a clinic that deals with people who have HIV, um, the nurse said, you should have a flu shot because you are immune compromised. Now, fortunately, this person had a really um, strong understanding of what it meant to be un undetectable, and he was confident in that status. So he challenged the nurse, and he said, well, actually, I'm undetectable. I have over 1,000 CD4s. So I'm not immune compromised. And the nurse said, sorry, you're right. You're not immune compromised. It's just what we're used to saying. But I argue that that's Maybe we shouldn't be saying that if it's not true, because that's a pretty damaging message to give someone. So um, really cool story about how a word can lead to an empowering sense of self if you're living with HIV. Um, another story from the community, decreased discrimination through education. A lot of discrimination, I think, 
around HIV is to do with sexual contact. I don't think many people are afraid to have lunch or dinner with someone with HIV, but when it comes to sex and concern about becoming infected, um, I think that's where a lot of discrimination comes in. So a friend of mine went on a date a couple of years ago, or a year ago actually, and this fellow said to him that he was undetectable on the second date. But all my friend heard was that he was HIV positive. That's, that's all he heard. And my friend was scared, and he quickly ended this relationship. This was last year in 2013. But my friend was curious about what this word undetectable meant. So he did some research. He read the partner study in HPTN, and he actually had a friend who works in a local AIDS service organization in Vancouver. And he, so he read up on undetectable and got to be comfortable with the concept. The following year, this year, he went on another date. And after a couple dates, this other guy also disclosed as undetectable. But this time, my friend said, that's cool. I know about undetectable viral load and risk of transmission. And I'm cool with that. So to me, that's a very strong story about how education can reduce discrimination and also the stigma that the first per person experienced was not experienced by the second person. So. Just quickly, I would like to talk about my last point, and that's how um, undetectable can be used um, and in safer sex messaging for those who choose not to use condoms. So we know that, depending on what study you look at, roughly 50% of men who have sex with men do not regularly use condoms. Um, so do we continue to try and change the behaviors that we have over the last 30 years in the hopes of an incremental increase in condom usage? Or do we work with the behaviors we have, which is a lack of condom usage by a number of people, and um, promote new tools such as pre-exposure prophylaxis and the concept of an undetectable viral load through treatment as prevention? So there's actually one website in the community, some of you may be familiar with, called BBRTS, Bareback Real-Time Sex. And it actually uses all of the current safer sex language, such as undetectable and prep, to give guys who choose not to use condoms uh, safer sex language and tools. And I'll, give you, I'll show you a screenshot from this um, website. So as you can see here, people can identify as negative, undetectable, or neg and prep. So this has all of the language and awareness raising language that people can use to describe themselves and what they're looking for to practice safer sex in the absence of condoms. So I'll show you an example of an ad on here. So this guy, if you look at the bottom right, he identifies his status as negative. He's looking for someone who's undetectable. He's chosen not to use condoms, but he still wants to be safe. And he's actually gone to the trouble of describing what he's doing here by saying, looking for fun. I'm negative. I would like to stay that way. So I've read that the best way is to fuck with undetectable guys. Hit me up. So this guy's using all the current science. Um, he's been made aware of it. He's using it. He's having safer sex. He's decided not to use condoms. Um, in contrast, this is a pamphlet we're currently handing out that's still in production in Canada. Uh, this is a safer sex men, um, pamphlet done up as a menu, entrees. So this offers only one option, condoms, no condoms. So with a condom, low risk, without a condom, high risk. But if, you've already, if you're one of the roughly 50% who aren't going to use condoms, there's nothing on here for you. You're left in the dark. I'll just give you a quick example of a, another hookup ad from Craigslist where someone doesn't seem to have the language, the tools, or the awareness. So here's a guy, and there's tons of these. Um, this guy is 28, bottom. He's looking to have sex without a condom, bareback. And he identifies as drug and disease free and negative. So it, if I can't see anywhere on here where he has any tools or awareness to have safer sex, except for hope and wishful thinking, I guess. But. Um, then just another quick point about um, bareback porn. There seems to be a real proliferation of this. One of the problems is that the new safer sex technologies we have are invisible. PrEP and undetectable viral load are, undetect are invisible compared to using a condom. So safer sex tools such as undetectable viral load are invisible. So does bareback porn mislead? uninformed viewers and create a myth that there's no risk of contracting HIV. And here's a quote from the porn industry that addresses undetectable viral load. Long story short, yes, most studios do hire models who are HIV positive and undetectable, and they do pair them with 
other models who are positive. It's an open secret, keyword being secret. If you watch one of these videos, it's pretty easy to assume that there's no worry, no concern, you're not seeing any interventions, but there are interventions obviously being taken, but they're invisible. Uh, so bear, again, bareback porn and the invisible prep. So again, safer sex tools such as prep are invisible, so again, does bareback porn mislead uninformed viewers to assume that no precautions are being taken and that there's no risk? One of the points I'd like to make is if we talk about PrEP and undetectable more, is it possible some of these um, websites might put it as a disclaimer or is it possible we might educate viewers so that they're watching this information and going, oh, they must be taking precautions. Here's another quote from the industry. I just find it fascinating and wonder how much more crossover we'll see between positive and negative performers doing bareback sex with the continued usage of PrEP. So this is going on. It's easy to assume that there's no precautions being taken and that is really dangerous. We have this new science and if we don't talk about it and message it, I think a lot of people could fall through the cracks and make some pretty serious mistakes. So just to end, my last slide. On the importance of language, um, this is a really cool quote, I think, from uh, Dr. Kelly who is talking about his work in addictions research. He said, there's an old proverb that states, if you want something to survive and flourish, call it a flower. If you, want to kill, if you want to kill it, call it a weed. So I argue that embracing the current language of undetectable empowers people to flourish and make better decisions. So thank you very much.